Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. In this video, we are going to simplify the concept of the daily bias in smart money trading. Understanding the daily bias will help you increase your win rate by finding better entry setups and having a clearer view of the market's overall conditions. If your entry models aren't working well in a lower time frame, it's crucial to identify the direction of the higher time frame. While daily bias may seem complex, this video aims to simplify it into an easily applicable strategy that anyone can use on the chart. Here's the list of topics we're going to cover in this video. So, if this interests you, be sure to hit the like button to support us in creating more videos like this. Also, consider subscribing to our channel if you're new, as we regularly publish advanced trading concepts. So what is the daily bias in smart money concepts? As the name suggests, daily bias refers to the overall prediction of market direction and sentiment for the upcoming day. So basically, it's an analysis we conduct on higher time frames such as weekly, daily, and four-hour charts to better understand market conditions that may not be visible on our entry time frame. Now, most of the daily bias strategies are overly complicated without clear guidance. That's why in this video, we aim to propose an easy step-by-step -step applicable approach. But first, why do we even need to determine the daily bias, and what is the psychology behind it? Reason number one, higher time frame levels are more important. A minor reaction to a higher time frame key level can be a significant trend change in the lower time frames. So before placing any trade, we should check how much room we have before tapping into a higher time frame supply or demand area. This will help us understand how to set our targets, stop losses, and avoid losing trades. Here, on the Euro-Dollar 1-hour chart, we can see a strong downtrend. However, when the price failed to establish a new lower low and rejected this level twice, the market reversed. Now, if we zoom out to the daily time frame, we can see that this area is considered a strong support area for the price. So despite the heavy bearish momentum on the 1-hour chart, we witnessed a temporary reversal. The higher time frame key levels are more crucial because they provide a stronger indication of where major price levels are located and where the market is likely to react due to their stability and reflection of longer term trends. Number 2. Increasing Success Rate The best trading setups occur when the higher time frame and lower time frame are in alignment. Imagine, on the lower time frame, we observe a move with inefficiency breaking above the previous market structure. In this scenario, if the price manages to pull back to the order block zone, it would present a perfect opportunity to enter a long position, set our stop below the swing low, and target the next level of market structure ahead of the price. Now what if the lower time frame analysis aligns with the higher time frame? Imagine if the lower time frame uptrend were part of a bullish movement on the higher time frame. This could constitute a perfect trade as we have combined higher time frame levels and directional bias with a lower time frame entry setup. With all being said, the psychology behind the daily bias in smart money concepts is to track the behavior of institutional traders so that we can plan our entry setups aligned with this bias. Now that you understand the fundamentals, let me show you how to determine the daily bias using smart money concepts. We use three major concepts in identifying the daily bias supply and demand levels, liquidity areas, and fair value gaps. We're going to use a combination of all the information to determine the next moves in the market. Supply and demand, who is in control? Now, identifying which side is in control is really important in trading because it can help you avoid many unnecessary losses. How does the system work? It works based on simple mitigation principles. If the price mitigates a demand zone, the demand takes control. And if it mitigates a supply zone, the supply takes control. We always want to trade with the controlling side of the market. Let me show you how. Here we have a moving downtrend with a series of bearish, impulsive, and corrective movements. Every time the market makes a structural break, a supply zone automatically forms. This is the latest supply zone in front of the price. And as long as the price trades below it, the supply is in control. But if the price breaks and closes above this area, 
the demand takes control, and a demand zone forms. Now if the bullish movements continue and we witness breaks of structure to the upside, each demand zone becomes a trading opportunity to go long since our bias is bullish. This bullish bias continues until the price taps into this unmitigated supply area. After encountering this area, we no longer consider this market bullish because it has the power to reverse the price and induce a temporary correction. So we have a battle between buyers and sellers. The market could enter a phase of consolidation between the demand and supply until one side regains control again. Now here, if the market breaks the demand zone to the downside, it shows that the supply took control. And we can take short entries until we reach the next unmitigated demand zone in front of the price, which happens to be a temporary reversal point for the price. On the other hand, if the price breaks the supply area to the upside, it shows that the demand is in control, and we can take long entries with confidence until we reach the next unmitigated supply area. Now let's see an example on the candlestick chart for the who is in control topic. But before we continue, if you're curious about how we stay updated on financial news and fundamental analysis, well, we rely on Fastbull, one of the best trading websites with various useful trading tools. This site provides one of the most accurate and detailed economic calendar, a tool we use every day before starting our technical analysis. 24-7 economic live streaming also allows us to stay informed about the latest trading world's news and fundamental analysis. So if you want to benefit from multiple trading tools that can significantly improve your trading, make sure to check the link in the description. Here we have a series of lower lows and lower highs and an extreme area of the supply zone. Now why is this supply area so important? Because it created a bearish imbalance and a break of structure. So our bias is bearish. And if the price returns to this area, we can take short entries, and our first target would be this low. Now, here we can see that the price has failed to create a new low, and it has broken the supply zone to the upside, which shows that the demand has taken control. Now, our bias is bullish, and we can take long entries at demand levels until we reach the unmitigated supply area in front of the price. After tapping into that zone, we have no clear bias, and we should wait to find out which side can take control again. All of our explanations were on a single time frame so far, but usually we apply this concept across multiple time frames. For example, this demand zone could have been a key level on a higher time frame. Anytime you want to determine the bias, you need to analyze from a higher time frame down to a lower time frame. An important point to note is that as you zoom into lower time frames, you're likely to encounter many false price action signals due to higher volatility. That's why it's crucial to base your analysis primarily on the daily and four hour time frames. This is also why trading price action setups tend to have higher win rates on the hourly time frame compared to the one minute, as lower time frames carry more noise. Now, with all that being said, to identify the daily bias, we open the daily and four hour charts and apply this concept to determine who is in control. Then, we zoom into our entry time frame and search for trading opportunities aligned with the higher time frame bias. Now the next concept to apply to the chart to establish a high quality method for determining daily bias is the liquidity concept. You might have heard that liquidity is what makes the price move. But where is this liquidity? It's not just found above the swing highs or swing lows. At every price level, there's a lot of liquidity available. However, what we're talking about here is stop loss liquidity. Liquidity exists where stop losses are located. There are two types of liquidity in the market, buy side and sell side. Liquidity above a high or a group of highs represents buy side liquidity. Liquidity below a low or a group of lows represents sell side liquidity. Now how does it help in terms of identifying market bias? To answer this question, you need to know how the algorithmic price delivery works. The algorithmic price delivery is engineered market behavior by big banks and institutions to make the market fluctuations towards the liquidity zones on the chart. The price is always coming from a liquidity zone or moving towards it, liquidity to grab and liquidity to target. When the price approaches buy side liquidity, the bearish traders will go short or they will protect their previously opened short positions. On the other hand, the breakout traders will go long if the price breaks through this level. The animated movement that aimed to grab this liquidity is called the buy side delivery. 
it's running high to engage the liquidity above these relative equal highs. The algorithmic price delivery has engaged the liquidity by trapping traders on both sides, and then the smart money would go short. When the price approaches this level, the bullish traders will go long or they will protect their previously opened long positions. On the other hand, the breakout traders will go short if the price breaks through this level. The animated movement that aimed to grab this liquidity is called the sell side delivery. The algorithmic price delivery has engaged the liquidity by trapping traders on both sides, and then the smart money would go long to engage the buy side liquidity. Now, this general analysis is aimed at finding the overall market direction, but not entry setups. You can use any strategy to enter the trading position, but remember, before using any setup with your real account, you should backtest it on different pairs to evaluate the trading strategy's performance using historical data. Now here on the actual chart, we have euro dollar in the 4 hour time frame. This is the perfect example of how the market moves toward liquidity areas. Here, these equal highs represent the buy side liquidity, and the equal lows represent the sell side liquidity. The market first moves up to engage the buy side liquidity, and then targets the sell side liquidity. Once again, after sweeping the liquidity below these equal lows, the market aims to target the buy side liquidity above this area of supply. This scenario happens multiple times until the price starts to push in the original bearish direction. The institutional price delivery has the power to affect the price, but it cannot change the overall order flow. Remember, trading is about the future price movements, and the nature of the future is unpredictable. It's impossible to define every single possible scenario, but through time and practice, you will realize that some repetitive patterns happen in the market over and over again. Now, the next concept to pay attention to on the chart when identifying the daily bias is fair value gap areas. Essentially, the fair value gap refers to the imbalance between the buyers and sellers, which can be signified by the space between the wicks of three consecutive candles on a price chart. Now, what does it mean in terms of price action? It shows a buy side imbalance where the buying pressure has significantly outweighed the selling pressure, possibly due to institutional activities. Now, the market has entered a phase of inefficiency, which usually leads it to return to the fair value gap area to patch them over. If you are a smart money trader, identifying the fair value gap should be one of the first things you do when you open the trading chart, and your eyes must jump right to it. The fair value gap tells us that big players have participated in the market and impacted the price. The market usually comes back to these spots to grab any leftover orders, which might give us a trading opportunity but only if there are still orders left. Here on the euro dollar one hour chart, we have a bearish trend. The latest impulsive move has started somewhere around here, all the way down to here. We had a sell side imbalance, which is signified by these large candles that left the fair value gap areas behind. Now that the price is buy side inefficient, it needs to return to the fair value gap areas to patch them over, which possibly provides us a trading opportunity. Again, we have a sharp move to the downside which created a fair value gap area. Then price makes a pullback to this area, rejects the FVG, and continues pushing downwards. We can apply this concept to all of the time frames. Even if you look at the daily or weekly time frame, you will see that price also makes FVG areas. Here on the euro dollar daily time frame, we have a gap area between the lowest price that traded during this day and the highest price traded during this one. This area is created due to the massive selling pressure and only downside price action during the middle day. So, we expect the price to eventually trade back up into that gap zone, and that's the nature of the fair value gap. Now with all being said, let me show you how to apply all of the concepts we discussed in this video together to identify the higher time frame bias. The higher time frame analysis depends on your entry time frame and it must be two times higher. Generally, we consider 4 hours daily and weekly as the overall market bias. Now here on the New Zealand dollar 4 hour chart, the recent bearish movements are evident. Let's apply the supply and demand concept first. This is the latest bearish break of structure, and this unmitigated area is considered our most recent supply zone. So right now, our bias is bearish, as long as the price trades below this zone. The next question is where is the liquidity? We know that lots of liquidity is gathered above this resistance area. So a run-up above this line can engage the buy side liquidity, 
which is another confirmation that the price can continue pushing downwards. Now, do we have an imbalance in the latest move? The answer is yes. We have a fair value gap area which, if we apply the retracement tool, we can see that it is located in the premium zone. So, forming a fair value gap in the premium area could be a perfect trading opportunity. So, we expect the price to return to the FBG to patch it over, and then we can look for reversal confirmations in the lower time frame to go short. Guys, that's it for this video. I hope this video provided value to you. If it did, please go ahead and smash the like button to show your support. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to our channel. See you in the next episode.